and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the law, citizens of the kingdom of God, I would like you please to help me welcome on stage Bishop Joe Kamanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. The devil is in trouble. Now listen to me. We are just going to let every demon in the house know that Jesus is alive. So if there is anyone or anything that's been hindering you for the last whatever months, years, weeks, I want you to let him know or let it know that Jesus is alive. And the best way we are going to do it by just by shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah! What an atmosphere in the house. Uh, you guys are pushing me too far now. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, wow, wow. What a welcome. I, every time I come in here, and this is the third time that I'm coming, every time I come, it's always uh, a different kind of atmosphere in the house. As I was walking in here, I can sense that there was a, a, the, the, the heaviness of the presence of God in this place. You know, when the presence of God becomes heavy, that's when he comes down in the midst of his people. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, my, I, I'm filled with a lot of emotions to see what God is doing through this power couple. I call them the majestic, the Matalas family. My God. It's amazing what God is doing. It's true that I, uh, we just had our, one of our biggest conferences of the year. And uh, Pastor Matala, uh, Apostle Matala was our main speaker. We had four speakers and he was the main speaker. And people were coming to hear him. They have been... I've been speaking about him, telling people about him, and many, many, many came. It's good when your reputation goes before you. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, we had everything ready. The, the, the church was ready, but the devil tried to stop. But he tried. He didn't succeed. Yeah. Tried. Uh, because we are planning on doing it bigger and better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the Lord for all that he's doing in this church. As a matter of fact, the church is getting bigger. Is it just me or, or I can see that God is expanding? Amen. And when I say expanding, I'm not just talking about numerically, but I'm also talking about spiritually. As I was sitting there, I can feel that the atmosphere is really boiling in this place. Now, uh, if you are here and you are a newcomer, I just want to speak to you for a second. Can I, can I do this? I, that's how I am. I, I just, uh, I mess up the protocols. Amen. You know, even when I'm in, at the hotel, I speak about the Padre's Tabernacle. Seriously. I, I talk about it everywhere I go. Uh, if you are a newcomer in this house, I just want to talk to you for a couple of seconds. Listen. Uh, this is the kind of atmosphere you want to sit under because where you are can determine where you can go you know and, and the type of atmosphere that's created in this church is a place where you can belong I'm speaking to you uh, as, a, as a man of God knowing what the atmosphere of God can do in the life of a believer so if you're here and you are still making up your mind, make sure, make sure that you make the Padre Tabernacle your church. And if I can just speak to those who will be watching us on the videos, listen, 
this is the place to be from wherever you are make sure you make your way all the way here in jesus name can we clap our hands for people that are watching us on the videos hallelujah thank you jesus we bless the name of the lord why do i hear tv 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 i keep hearing tv uh, a few people need to rise up from for here to, to sponsor tv broadcast i believe time is right i just believe time is right as i was sitting there i was watching everything that was happening i said to myself what will happen if the entire city of pretoria can know about what is is it that we are doing in this church there will be two three four services in this temple hallelujah hallelujah and you know when i'm at glory house in chicago when i speak like this two three four five they will rise up they say okay bishop will take care of this with no problem amen so i want you to pray about it to consider this this is the time for expansion we are speaking about no more limit and i believe it's not just no more limit in our individual lives but also no more limits in our corporate life emma as a church hallelujah i want to thank apostle matala and of course the first lady pastor claudine matala thank you so much for the trust it means a lot to us we don't take it for granted amen it's it's true that we are not sitting there looking for places to go but whenever we are invited we take it very seriously and it is a double honor for me to come back you know when they invite you somewhere for the first second third time that means you're doing something right hallelujah so i take this microphone with fear and trembling thank you so much thank you and i also want to thank the entire leadership of this church for the wonderful job that you all are doing in here the, I, I love the spirit of excellence in this church i find myself amen, amen. so it's good it's good to know that uh, the apostle and uh, pastor claudine matala they are not just uh, alone out there but there are people men and women who said god here we are use us for your glory and uh, uh we appreciate you whatever you are doing here we are hearing about it all the way in chicago amen so may the lord continue to bless you abundantly and of course the church the paris tabernacle thank you so much we want you to know that you have brothers and sisters all over the world amen by the grace of god glory house is in the city of chicago in the city of los angeles but also in the city of dar es salaam tanzania which is a great city in uh in eastern Af Af africa last year as a matter of fact in the last 12 months i spent six months of my time in that city hallelujah Paul said go there so we are there we are doing the work of the ministry we are praying and we're believing that by the grace of god we will be opening a christian radio station in that city keep uh, keep us in your prayers we are really trying to to impact a generation and i believe that's all that matters you know the cars that we drive the houses we live in really don't matter before god they are just things we need to live our lives uh, so that we can live a legacy behind us if you cannot leave a legacy behind you then you are in trouble you know life is not all about eating drinking and be merry no absolutely no god has a bigger purpose for having you here on earth you are not a product of an accident but rather you were carefully intended for you to be here and because you are there you need to make good use of your time so that you just don't fill in a space hallelujah god will bless you so that you can be a blessing amen it is good to be in the presence of god let's grab our bibles let's open them up in the book of exodus chapter 7 exodus chapter 7 
and we are going to go from verse 10 if you may stand with me for the reading of the word exodus 7 to 10 all the way uh, verse 10 all the way to verse 12 so moses and aaron went into pharaoh and they did so just as the lord commanded and aaron cast down his rod before pharaoh and before his servant and it, the, the rod became a serpent verse 11 but Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers so that the magicians of Egypt, they also did it in like manner with their enchantment. Ah. For every man threw down his rod and they also became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up all of their rods. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to bless you. I want to thank you for calling us into your marvelous light bringing us into your presence for my bible tells me that in your presence there is fullness of joy lord i pray that your joy will be the strength of your people in this temple here today i thank you father for that you every time that you bring your people you have a reason for bringing us together as we kick off this celebration summit Lord, we pray that lives will be transformed, that destinies will be shaped in this church, that things will be done that your people never even dreamed of. My God, I pray that this will be the beginning of great things in the lives of your people. We thank you and we bless you. I pray, my God, that you will use my mouth to speak on your behalf, but you will equally anoint your people's ears for them to receive from you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Can you just touch someone and tell him there is power against power? You may be seated. Hallelujah. I thank God for this, uh, the theme of this year's summit. This is a theme that I truly believe that it is prophetic. God would not just call his people in one place for a certain number of days for no reason anytime he brings you there he brings you in together for a purpose like this you need to know that he has a mandate for you a mandate and a purpose are two different things a purpose is the reason why you were created but a mandate is a job that's being given to you in order for you to be able to fulfill your purpose i will say it again a purpose is the reason why you were created hallelujah but a mandate is a job that's being given to you in order for you to fulfill your purpose amen so when god brings you together in a in, in, in a summit like this seven days that means he has a mandate he wants to give you there is something that god has in store that god has kept aside just for you and you need to understand how God operates. Many people don't have, don't receive from God, not because God cannot give. Many don't receive from God because they don't understand how God operates. But when you get to, to the same arena in the understanding of the operation of God, then at that very moment you will begin to benefit from what is in the mind of God. That's what we call the will of God. Hallelujah. This is not my message. I'm trying to get you somewhere here. You need to understand how God operates. All the days of your life, you should live your life trying to understand what is it that God has in mind. That's the reason why you should never be begged to come to church. Apostle. I hope you don't beg anybody to come to church. Thank you, Jesus. You should never be pushed to come to church. You need to understand that being in the presence of God has its own benefit. When you understand these things, then you begin to apply those principles. That's when you see results. We are living in the days that evil has taken place so much so. That people are now sitting back and they are wondering, but you call yourself a believer. 
It's true. But also, I have my friend who goes to a Sangoma and they see results. But you, as a believer, where are your results? So people are coming to church every Sunday. They're coming to church every week. But because they don't understand the principles of God, because they don't understand how God operates, they end up becoming weak believers. And because they are so weak, those who are going to Sangomas, they are able to show proof of what the enemy can do, but you have nothing. Touch your neighbor, tell him there is power against power. Beloved, you need to understand that we are living in the days that God is trying to show up and show off. Mm. The days when everything was concealed, everything was hidden, everything was, uh, you know, let's just try to get by. No, no, no. Those days are over. We are living in the days when God wants to show up. But the problem is, he cannot do this unless he uses people. Amazing. Amazing that God wanted to save the earth. He wanted to save humankind. But he could not do it unless he went through a human being. These are principles that he has established that he said to himself he has to live by. So God is trying to show up in this season, in this generation. But he said to himself, listen, he can't just send fire from heaven the way he did it back in the days. No. The way he wants to do it now, he wants to cooperate with people, men and women like you and I. So that his glory can come down. When we begin to speak about God's glory, there are two words in Hebrew that speaks of God's glory. The first word is what we call Shekinah. S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. Shekinah. The Shekinah glory is what we call the cloud glory. This is what was going with the children of Israel as they left Egypt. As they were walking through the wilderness, this cloud of glory was showing them the way. That's the presence of God. The presence of God as Shekinah it is the passive presence of God. I want you to write these things down. Write some things down. Don't worry. We are going to get there. I need to teach these things. You need to understand. You know, Apostle gave me a heavy burden to open this summit. So I got to lay some foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you begin to talk about Shekinah, Shekinah glory is the passive presence of God. As we are sitting here, the Shekinah glory is wavering over the people, even as we are sitting here. The presence of God that guarantees you security, just for you to know that God is there. It pays to know that God is there. A man cannot protect you. Oh. It doesn't matter how many guns they can carry. At the end of the day, Everyone will die. God! When God decides to visit a human being, their lives changes forever. Forever. So when you begin to talk about Shekinah glory, it's the confirming presence of God in the life of a believer. Shekinah glory is something that God is still doing today. But here's the second word that I want you to take note of. Now listen, you need to write these things down, write it on a piece of paper, write it on the palm of your hand, write it somewhere. The second word for God's glory is what we call kabod. K-A-B-O-D. Kabod. The kabod glory is a whole nother level of glory. The kabod glory stands for four things. It speaks of four things about God. When you begin to talk about the kabod glory, number one, it speaks of abundance in God. When you say kabod, what God hears is abundance. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 18 to 19, Moses went before God. Exodus 33, 18 to 19. Moses went before God and said, God, show me your glory. Hallelujah. 
Amazing. Come on, let's, let's read it. And he said, please, show me your glory. Verse 19, watch this. Then God said, are, are you reading with me? Then God said, I will make all my goodness to pass before you and I will proclaim my name, the name of the Lord, before you. Watch what's happening here. Moses goes before God because he needed God. He wanted the glory. He said, God, show me your glory. But watch what God does. Instead of showing up and uh, thunder, a bunch of things, no, no, no. He began to tell the man, say, yes, you are asking me for my glory. What I am going to give you will be my goodness. Can you just touch someone and tell him, God is good. Hallelujah. God began to tell Moses, yes, you are asking for my glory. What I am going to give you will be my goodness. This is the cabal level of glory. It's no longer just the confirming presence of God, but now it becomes an active presence of God. God tells Moses, listen, not only I will show you my goodness, but in you I will confirm my name as the Lord. So when you begin to call on God's glory, you need to understand that God is getting ready not only to show up in your life, but he's now getting ready to use you in such a way that people will know that Jehovah God is your God. My God, the Bible talks about Isaac. God looked at Isaac and he said to himself, you know what? Yes, I can make him a mighty warrior. Yes, I can do that. But I don't want to do it. But the best thing I can do in him is to make him rich. Can we talk about money? Money can solve a lot of problems. God decided, he said, the best way I can show up for people to know That I am the God, Jehovah God of this church. I will bless them in such a way that people will know that this is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When you begin to talk about Kabod, you are talking about abundance. The abundance of his goodness. You know, when God begins to get to be good to you, hallelujah, when God decides to be good to you, people will know. Amen. I said people will know. Amen. Here's the second thing about Kabod. So Kabod speaks of abundance, but Kabod also speaks of splendor. The splendor of God. So when you're talking about the Kabod glory, what you're talking about is the awesomeness of God. This is the way you say, wow. God is so good, you just, you can't speak about it, you can't say it, but the best you can say, wow. That's the reason why God wants to make you an enigma. Uh, I said you, 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 yes, you. God wants to make you a wonder. That people will look at you and they will not have a word to say. They will just say, wow. It's so wonderful. It's so marvelous. They can't name it. They can't say it. And all they can say is, wow. The splendor of God. When this kind of glory comes upon a man or a woman, the best people will say is, wow. Everything about you will be a wow. Everything you do will be a wow. You know, it is one thing for God to bless you. But it is a whole nother thing for God to make you a wonder in this earth. And God is saying this. Listen to me and listen to me well. God is saying at the end of this summit, men of God, at the end of this summit, God is going to take men and women from this church to be a wonder over this nation. I don't see you. I don't see your hands. I don't see your hands. God is saying, at the end of this summit, there will be some gift boxes. Gift boxes. 
that will flow out of heaven in the hands of men and women come and say I receive it you may be seated if you can let's do this so and when you begin to speak about God you are talking about the splendor of God God begins to make you God in the eyes of the people of this world he looks at Moses and says, Moses listen I will send you to Pharaoh but you are not going to go alone but for as you go to Pharaoh I will make you God in his eyes all right number three when you begin to speak about Kabod you're not only talking about the abundance you're not only talking about the splendor but you're also talking about the honor of God this is where God says I will honor he who honors me God dwells in the honor of his people when his people honor him, honor him he find in there a place to come and dwell honor is when where excellence takes a whole nother level hallelujah Amen. and this is just a side note here these two here are not our friends you know pastor eh? pastor how are you pastor no 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 there must be a certain level of honor even walking in in this house you can't just walk in here do anything you want to do and act any way you want to act no we we must honor the presence of god this is the whole reason why god had to divide the temple into three mm. but yeah thank you jesus jesus died on the cross and the veil has been broken now we have access in the holy of holies but that doesn't mean that honor is gone we must honor the lord and whenever you begin to honor god at that moment god is drawn unto you god loves it when you honor him here's number four and this is my message of today when you begin to talk about cardboard you're not only talking about abundance you're not only talking about splendor you're not only talking about honor but you're also talking about power i said cardboard glory is the active presence of god the acting presence of god when you begin to talk about cardboard you are also talking about the power of god listen to me and listen to me well time has come when the world is looking for the power that power that is in you the bible tells us that the same power that raised jesus from the dead that very same power dwells also on the inside of you can you imagine that you mean to tell me in you reside the resurrective power of god you can call anything into existence that did not exist before. So you know anytime your car breaks down, don't panic. Don't cry. Don't shout. Just stand before God, before the car. And just begin shaking. You can you think something can happen? When you say, stand before your sick child, don't cry don't panic because he who is in you there's someone in this church right now you have a problem with your hearing your hearing you can hear from the right ear you can hear from the right ear the Lord is saying that he's healing you even right now right ear right ear apostle is there any way we can get testimonies at the end if we can all right right ear is being healed when you begin to talk about kabod glory you are talking about the power of god then we find ourselves in exodus chapter 33 verse 18 to 19. in exodus something happened before that the children of israel they went into egypt now we are talking about the kabod glory here okay hallelujah the children of Israel found themselves in Egypt. They came in Egypt celebrated. People were clapping their hands as they were walking in. 
Why? Because one of theirs was a solution maker to the whole nation of Egypt. I need you to follow this very carefully. So, as Joseph was a solution to the nation, his whole family was able to be welcomed in this nation, in this kingdom, with celebration. After a little while, something happened. I need you to listen to me very carefully. Because many times as you are being celebrated, at the very same time, the devil is also working some demonic machinations. If you don't pay attention, if you don't pay attention, the enemy will sneak in on you. That's the whole reason why you need to understand and have the spirit of uh, 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 wisdom and discernment. Hallelujah. They walked in into Egypt, celebrated. As they got in there, things began to go wrong. They got to a level of point where they became slaves in the land of their blessing. Things were tough. The children of Israel, they began to cry out to God. And the Bible says that God did not speak for 400 years. Oh. 400 years, God shut up. And when there is no word, death comes in. Slavery comes in. Poverty comes in. Everything that you had, you will lose it. When God is no longer speaking, many times, many times, desolation comes in. The Bible says, for 400 years, God will not speak until one day, God decided to meet a man. And this man was Moses. God began to talk to him and said, now listen, I'm going to send you for you to free up my people. As Moses decided to take upon this mandate, he went before Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, no, I cannot. Ah. Moses found himself hitting a roadblock. There was a wall, a mountain before him. He knew the mandate of God. But at the same moment, there was a very stubborn demon before him. He didn't know what to do. Moses went back before God. He said, God, aren't you the one that said that there was no more limit? Hallelujah. Aren't you the one that asked me to go and tell your people that we are going to take on new territories? What is happening, oh God? Now, as I'm laying this foundation, I want you to know that as you will be empowered after these seven days, you will meet some roadblocks you will meet some mountains. Hallelujah. The only way that you will know that you serve the God of no limit is when you see with your bare eyes how your limits are being blown away. That's how you will know. So next time you see some walls standing before you, do not panic. Next time you see that mountain before you, do not panic. For we serve the God of no limit. There is nothing that can hinder you. There is nothing that can block and stop you. God is God all by himself. The Bible says that Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. It got to a point where God said to himself. That there is too much talking. We are talking too much. With no result. And this is a serious problem in the body of Christ. We talk a lot. We memorize all of the Bible verses. We know the lingo. We know the prayers. We know everything. We know the dance. We know the move. But the one thing we don't have is power. And that's causing a lot of trouble. It's causing a lot of trouble. But God said to himself, Now is the time for the other side of the cupboard glory for this man to see my power. He said, Moses, this is what I want you to do. Now, I want you to go before Pharaoh. And Aaron will be holding your rod. And when you get before Pharaoh, throw your rod on the floor. And your rod will become a serpent. 
And as he becomes a serpent, this man will let you go. Ah, hallelujah. Moses was full of joy. He said, God, finally you are doing something. Finally, I know that I have my solution in front of me. Here they were all the way before Pharaoh. They stood before Pharaoh. And Aaron threw the rod on the floor. And the rod became a serpent. Wow. What a moment of glory. This was a demonstration of power. This was the moment that Moses has been waiting for. But to his amazement, the devil was laughing. Hallelujah. The devil was laughing. Why? Because at the very moment when you are doing the moves, I want you to know that demons can do the same moves as you are doing. Mm. It's amazing how you can be out there full of the power of the Holy Ghost. You fear God. You pray. You do everything you need to do. But demons will look at you and laugh. Ah. It's amazing how people can still mock you even after you're doing the right thing and you wonder is there a god in heaven god where are you as we believe in god as god called us into his marvelous light he never promised us an easy life you should always know that God never said that you are going to have it easy. No. As a matter of fact, he said you are going to have many tribulations. You are going to have many issues. But believe in God and believe also in me. Why was Jesus saying that? It was because as you are going through some things, do not let those situations define you. You must remain true to yourself. Why? Because Jesus is on the throne. Because Jesus lives. I know I can confront any kind of situations. For nothing is impossible to those who believe. Even if they can mock you today. That your neighbor tell him, give me some time. Just give me some time. I'm, I'm, I'm working it. I'm working it. It's, it's, not, it's not there yet. It's just I'm working it. They will look at you and they will wonder. They say, yeah, yeah, you, you are the one that speaks in tongues. Yeah, you, you speak the wonders of God. But here you are. Your bank account is empty. That your neighbor tell him, give me some time. Give me some time. You pray for people and people get healed. But at the very same time, your own child is sick. You did all the prayers that you could. Nothing is happening. You say, God, where are you? Touch your neighbor. Tell him, give me some time. Give me some time. Moses found himself before Pharaoh. This was one of the mega miracles before him. But demons also came in. They did the same thing. I can imagine Moses standing before pharaoh witches were on the left aaron was on the right he was standing there pharaoh was standing there pharaoh was laughing the witches were laughing aaron did not know what to do moses was standing there god where are you where are you this is the whole reason why god brought you here for seven days he brought you here for seven days because this kind of moment you've been going through it for too long and time has come for it to stop the devil decided to show up on that day all of its power it was not fake it was real there were serpents on the floor and Moses knew that I am in trouble where I am. If God, you don't rise up, I am finished. <laughs> he knew that this one here, there must be a difference. Some of the things we can do, they can do it too. Ah, God, where are you? The Bible says as he was sitting there, I am just imagining what was going on inside of him. 
If it was me, I'll shake it to Yaba. Roko Koshita. Koshita Yamama. You know when you have your back against the wall, you don't know what to do anymore. You, you, you know that this is the end of it. If God doesn't show up, you are finished. You see, your problem is you never had your back against the wall. But for some of us, who you know that if God doesn't rise up, it's done with me. As he had his back against the wall, God began to act. To his amazement, Moses began to see that that power that came out was nothing compared to the power of our Jehovah God. At that very moment, the serpent of Moses began to swallow one after another, after another. I came here to Brothers Tabernacle today to decree and declare that those who are against you, they will come to bow before you in the name of Jehovah God. Can you change power against power? As God is getting ready to take you to no limit, what's going to happen is this. There will be power in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, there will be some things that will come against you. But the one that have you have on the inside is the most powerful. He's the almighty. He says this, he says, listen. I will bless you. I will bless you. And nothing, absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. You are stronger than you are, than you think you are. You are bigger than you think you are. As the cabal glory of God comes upon you, for the next seven days, God says he is going to empower every fiber of your being. Every cell within you, that you will lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You see about 10 people raise their hands here because you don't know how to grasp some of the principles listen to me the enemy is not afraid of your hallelujahs the enemy is not afraid of how many shout you do the enemy is terrified when he sees the demonstration of the power of God in action. The desires of everyone in this place here today should sum up around the demonstration of his power. I believe when you begin to talk about no limit, when you begin to, be, to talk about taking new territories, you will not be able to do it without the power of God showing up in your life. Don't even try on your own strength. Then you will miss it. Rely on the power of God. You see, the power of God can do a few things for you. Here's one of the things that the power of God can do in your life. The power of God will validate your assignment. Did you hear me? The power of God will validate your assignment. When the power of God is shown in your life when God decides to bust out of the sky and just show up and show off in your life people will know that you are the servant of the most high God the reason why some people are joking around you the reason why people are finding you as a joke you are, you are not real you are fake is because that power has not busted around you but when the power of God shows up, people will know that you are not speaking on your own. But God is with you. I decree and declare. Come and raise your hands from wherever you are. I decree and declare that as we are going through these seven days, there will be nothing but a demonstration of the power of God upon your life. And signs and wonders will follow you. In Jesus name I say I receive it the power of God 
will validate your assignment yes you have been called by god yes god is with you but how will they know how will they know are you listening to me now listen to me i'm speaking as the mouthpiece of god that you are going to make it no matter how many witches will try to come against you for the power of god upon your life will speak louder than anything else in the name of jesus can you say i receive it listen listen the, uh, the power of god will not just uh, validate your assignment the power of god will cause your enemies to reconsider hallelujah the power of god will cause your enemies to look at you for the second time <laughs> you know those who dismissed you they will reconsider yes they laughed at you but they will reconsider after they see the power of god upon your life they will know that this and this man is for real let them laugh for a little let them go on after you but i'm standing here with the authority of almighty god to let you know that the power of god is getting ready to burst upon your life that your enemies will see it with their own eyes it's not going to be the hidden power no it's going to be the exposed power just raise your right hand i said lord empower me for service in jesus name here's the third thing that the power of god will do i feel like praying for someone i really feel like praying for someone today the power of god will deepen your trust in god the power of god will deepen your trust in god it's amazing what paul said to the church of corinthians he told them he said listen first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 he says for as i came to you my speech and my preaching was not all about persuasive words of human wisdom but it was chapter 5 verse 5 it was in the demonstration of power so that read the last part so that your faith will not be in the wisdom of man verse 5 uh -huh, but in the power of god wait a minute so you mean to tell me that our faith our belief in god should be based upon what we know that god can do yes yes faith is not just some void wishful thinking uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. this is the whole reason why god wants to make himself real to you during these seven days listen if i were you i would not plan on missing any day on a week like this i will ask for a day off if i have to I will leave work early if I have to because this is a divine mandate, a divine assignment, a divine appointment. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. I want to see you here tomorrow. Listen to this. Paul said, your faith should not just be based on what I am telling you, but whether your faith should be based on the demonstration of the power of God. When God makes himself real to you, you will be like these three hebrews in the fiery furnace these three they just knew god you are going to deliver us from the hands of this man but wait a minute wait a minute just in case you don't stop us from going into the furnace even inside there you will be with us <laughs> hallelujah no wonder god's people are compromising left and right they are compromising because they have not seen the power of god in action because they haven't seen it their trust in god is weak but the power of god will deepen your trust in him because your faith in god will be based on fact not just the things that you are thinking that's the reason why you need the power of god it is time Jesus said in John 
chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that the things that I do, shall you do also. But you're not just going to do what I did, but even greater things. I said greater things. Greater things shall you do, for Jesus is going to the Father. And God is getting ready to use you to do a lot more than he did. But how will you be able to do it if there's no power in you? God sent me here today as we are kicking off this no limit, uh, taking on new territories, this new week of just changing everything about you. God sent me here so that you can just receive the power. And that power will make all the difference in your life. God wants to make you a wonder. But you will not become a wonder without he himself showing up through you, through your hands. Can we all rise up before the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. It is that moment. I don't know about you, but it is that moment. How will, you be able, how will you be able to break the limits without the power? How will you be able to take on new territories without power? The power of God is the one thing that you need to validate you. Yes, people are laughing. Yes, they are talking about you. Yes, it hasn't been working for a while. Yes, that sickness is still eating your body. But I'm standing here today with some great news for you. That Jesus is in the house today. And he's here to do one thing and one thing only to empower you. I just pray that there will be people in this house just like this with the issue of the blood. And she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know something can happen to me. I pray that there will be men and women in this house who will say, if only I can touch the Jesus. If only I can touch Jesus today, my life will be changed forever. Wherever you are, just raise your hands. I thank you, Father. We bless your name. Just raise your hands before the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Elohim, you are worthy to be praised. For there is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, my God.